Hey everybody, Marcus here. Thanks for coming back for our April 2023 monthly update for our Tesla solar panels and power wall system. April's been an awesome month for production, only two non-sunny days, so our solar numbers are through the roof. For those of you that are new here, we have a 12.24 kilowatt array. They're all east-facing panels. We also have the three power walls you can see behind me. Uh, before we get started, have a kind of awesome story about the power walls from this past month. Uh, it was our daughter's first birthday party in the morning. We were out in the backyard getting stuff ready, and I happened to feel my phone vibrate. I looked down, oh no, there's a grid outage. Uh, so we actually didn't know what was going on again because the phone just notified us of it. Uh, we were cleaning, there was cooking being done, and just not having power at the party would have been an absolute mess. So the power walls really saved our butts here. I showed my wife this. She just kind of looked at my phone and said, okay, okay, you win, the power walls are worth it. I thought this was an awesome story, so I tweeted it, and it turns out Tesla actually picked it up and retweeted it, so it was about 1.1 million views on the tweet last I looked. Pretty awesome, so if you're new here watching for the first time because of that, welcome. Let me know if there's anything you want to see, any questions you have, or anything I can help you with. Along with the power outage we had during the birthday party for my daughter, we also had our planned PG&E power pole replacement this month. You can see here it took about eight hours that we were without power during that replacement. Uh, I had said during the previous month that I was going to try using off-grid mode to try to prevent sending any excess electricity back to the grid. Unfortunately, I completely forgot, but thankfully Tesla handles this all automatically. As you can see in the daily graph here, your solar panels and your batteries are going to act like normal. Basically, they're just going to fill those batteries up, but this is a good example of what happens once those batteries are full. You might see this also in a pre-PTO state, but this is while we're off-grid. Basically, once those batteries are full, your gateway is going to tell your solar panels to ramp down to only match your house load. Now, this is where something like Drive on Sunshine comes in handy, because I happen to notice at the same time that we were you know, basically losing our solar production due to this, so I plugged our Model Y in. It had about a third full battery, so throughout the afternoon, as you can see here, it just basically starts to charge. It will utilize as much as it needs to uh, while you're off-grid, and as the solar production starts to ramp down, it'll actually ramp the charging down until it eventually stops, and it'll tell you that, that hey, there's not enough electricity to charge the car, like, charging is stopped. So that's a pretty cool feature. Now Tesla has put out some app updates in the past month. I think we're on version 4.20 now. Um, it mostly seems like they're under the hood kind of updates because there was no real functionality added, but hopefully those Drive on Sunshine updates are coming out soon. Now despite me forgetting to set the house into that off-grid mode during the power outage, everything ended up working out fine during that power outage except for off-grid mode. I'm not sure if other people are seeing this behavior, but basically I unwisely chose to start this at about 11.45 p.m. So I pulled up the app and I fired up the off-grid mode, gives you this little warning box at the bottom, it'll go back to the grid if it needs to, and I click that button. Once I click that button, there was about a second where the power in the entire house shut off, which I was not expecting at all, and it kind of upset me. I figured because I was initiating the power, you know, or off-grid mode, that it would be seamless. It wasn't a power cutoff or anything, but unfortunately that's not what happened. Everything in the power lost, uh, everything in the house lost power, and then it came back up. We lost internet. The app just sat there and was kind of not functional. It just had the spinny circles for about 30 seconds. I thought eventually something would happen and that would pass, but it just kind of sat there. So I ended up canceling out of that. Now I figured, hey, something might just be up. I'll try it again in the morning. So I tried it again in the morning and basically had the same exact result. Uh, I actually went back to the app after doing it, still had the spinny circles in the app uh, a couple minutes later for that off-grid mode, so I'm not sure what's up here. Uh, I probably need to submit a ticket because it doesn't seem like it's working correctly. So May 1st actually brings in the start of the virtual power plant season for 2023. It's going to run until the end of October. What's going to be interesting this year is to see if they utilize it as much as they did at the end of last year. 
Um, are they going to use it when it's 90, 95 degrees like it's starting to be in Northern California here? Or is it only going to be utilized when it's 110 degrees out later in the summer? I guess we'll have to see. I'm hoping that they do use it more because it's quite lucrative. These three power walls netted us $575 from about 14 events last year. So I hope to see it used often. Uh, if you'd like to join us and get a solar panel or solar roof system with power walls here, make sure you use my referral link down below. Tesla actually just revamped the referral system. Now there's some like cyber truck raffles and uh, you can use it for supercharging. You can use it for full self driving or enhanced autopilot. So make sure you click that link down below. If you're going to order a system, let me know and congratulations. Now let's look at the data. We're going to take a look at house usage first. In March last month, we used 1,036.3 kilowatt hours. And in April here, we used 1,169 kilowatt hours. It's about a 10% increase month to month. What's the difference here? It's mainly driving. Uh, last month in March, we used about 300 kilowatt hours or so between the two cars for charging. Uh, in April here, it was up to about 370 kilowatt hours, as you can see in the graphs here. Uh, we also had a little mini heat wave at the end of April. Uh, temps got into the 90s, 95s, so we turned the AC on to make sure everything was working. Now, as you can see in the daily graphs here, those little blips for the AC will start to add up. You're going to see that your excess electricity sent back to the grid as the you know months get hotter and AC usage starts ramping up. It's going to start decreasing, so you're going to get out of that sweet spot where you're not using heat, where you're not using AC and unfortunately start sending less back to the grid, but that's completely normal. Uh, for me, it's guilt-free solar electricity to keep in the house cold, so I don't mind it at all. Now looking at last year, in April we used 1,028.9 kilowatt hours. Again, that's about a 10% decrease or increase depending on how you look at it, but I attribute this just to the charging. Next up, we're going to take a look at solar production here. Now in March, we produced 1,309.2 kilowatt hours. In April, that was up to 2,063.9 kilowatt hours. Now that's a 50% increase. And keep in mind, February to March was also a 50% increase. So production numbers really ramp up as the summer gets closer. Now, April itself didn't have too many weather days here. We only had two days that were really cloudy or kind of off days. So our produ production numbers were fantastic. We actually averaged about 69 kilowatt hours per day, our high being 76.2 kilowatt hours in April here. To put that into perspective, February, two months ago, the high was only 42 kilowatt hours. 76 kilowatt hours is basically our Model 3 battery that's sitting in the uh, driveway here. It's filling it from empty to full. It's also, to put it into perspective, filling these three power walls twice. Now, last year in April, we produced 1960.8 kilowatt hours. That means we actually produced about 5% more this year. Um, mainly, it looks like they just had some cloud cover. We just had some cloud cover days in uh, April last year. Average production about 65 kilowatt hours per day. It's kind of interesting to see that the peak production last year in April was 77.7. .7. This year, it's down to 76.2. I'm sure that really doesn't mean anything. It might just be like the weather system that was overhead, but just something I'm going to keep an eye on to see if that does continue to decrease year over year. Powerwall usage is up next. Last month in March, we used 299 kilowatt hours. That was up quite a bit in April here to 496.9 kilowatt hours. You might remember in March, I had turned the system to 100% reserve for the Stormwatch event, so it wasn't getting used for about a third of a month. So that explains a big part of that decrease. Another part, uh, portion of that increase though, is that our AC is starting to turn on. And with our east facing panels, basically anything from you know later afternoon, four or 5 p.m., the panels aren't producing enough to fully cover the uh, AC. So we're gonna start drawing from the power walls until about 8 a.m. or so. So for us, our normal overnight usage, it started to creep over into that second power wall territory, you know, into the 15 to 16 kilowatt hours per night. Um, 
basically normal for April is waking up, seeing those power walls at about 60 or 65% capacity. They're usually full again by 10 a.m. or so if we're not charging, so there's really not a worry there at all. Um, now, last year in April, we discharged 489.1 kilowatt hours compared to that 496.9 this month. It's basically eight kilowatt hours or so difference from this year to last. Goes to show you, it's basically the same usage here, just covering that AC usage overnight, but really neat to see it that close. Uh, now looking at the power outages, again, the eight hour event is the power pole replacement. That little blip there, the short one, is actually the off-grid mode, so that was me doing that. The only unexplained outage was that two hour one during my daughter's birthday party, but man, were those power walls a lifesaver during that. Lastly, let's take a look at net grid use. April's probably gonna be about your fourth highest uh, solar production month, so you will expect your numbers going back to the grid to keep on creeping up and up. Now, one thing to note on the uh, charts here is you can look back in March, we sent back 220.5 kilowatt hours of the grid. In April, that's all the way up to 822.6 kilowatt hours. Uh, the thing to note on these graphs is March, see all that blue we're using the grid? In April, none of that. We're not using the grid at all. With the exception of virtual power plant events or if we have to charge both cars or something during the day for whatever reason, I really don't expect to use the grid at all until about Thanksgiving or so. Now last year, we had an absolutely fantastic production month in April. We were at negative 847.9 kilowatt hours back to the grid. I think that's actually our number one month in 2022. Uh, for sending uh, electricity back to the grid. April's a sweet spot around here. It's We're not using heat at all. Um, and then generally we're not really using AC too much. Uh, just kind of have the windows open so our house loads are down quite a bit. Um, once it gets hotter here, that sweet spot kind of goes away and then our excess electricity goes into powering the AC during the summer. Um, but like I said before, we aren't using the grid. So as you can see for the entire month of April, we are 100% self powered, no grid use, no grid use. Those uh, percentages are 57% from solar and 43% from power walls. Compare that to last month, which was 38% from solar, 29% from power wall and 33% from the grid. We are our own energy providers now, keeping our house running on 100% solar clean energy while also charging our cars as much as possible too. It's a beautiful thing and honestly, it saves you money. The payment on our system is less than we would be paying to PG&E for that same electricity. It just makes too much sense. Anyways, again, if you need a referral for a system you wanna join, get a uh, solar panel or solar roof system, feel free to use my referral link, get those shop points or Tesla that you can use for goodies, use that link down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, uh, let me know. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next month. Have a good one.